Hi friends, in SPC study, there are two important factors, lower specification limit and upper specification limit. In certain cases, we have both lower and higher, but in certain cases, we have either lower or higher, that is called unilateral tolerance. So, in general, we are very clear about the bilateral tolerance, but then what happens in case of unilateral tolerance, whether we need to calculate CP or not, whether we need to calculate CPQ or not, by the time this video will end, you will understand and you will get the answers of all these questions. In life, in general, you know, we think about the blood pressure, so we say it should be between 80 to 120. But when we are talking about blood sugar, we say that no, no, it should not be more than 90. At times when you are giving any competitive exam, we say that minimum mark should be at least 95 percent. So, in general in life also depending upon the requirement, there is upper specification limit or there is a lower specification limit. Something similar happens in SPC study also. When we talk about SPC, primarily it has got three key objectives. The first one is how we can improve the productivity. The second one is how we can increase the quality level and the third one is how we can reduce the wastages or the cost. In fact, when we talk about the SPC and the control chart, there are three key things that we generally see. The first one is we look into the shape, the second is we look into the spread and the third one is we look into the location that how it is. Now specifically coming to the unilateral and bilateral tolerance. So let me first start with the unilateral tolerance. When we talk about unilateral tolerance, it means either the specification limit is on the lower side or on the higher side. To give a simple example, say 5 plus 0.1. It means there is no lower specification limit. It can be either 5, maybe 5.05 .05 or maybe maximum 5.1. Similarly, when we talk about unilateral tolerance on the lower side, so the specification limit can be 5 minus 0.1. So it means it can be 5, it can be 4.95 or it can be 4.9. Now, as we move further, when we are calculating CP and CPK, what needs to be done, how to understand that. So just see the screen and there you will find that when we are giving an example of unilateral tolerance and when we are calculating CP or CPK, now I assume that we are talking about a shaft where the runout cannot be more than 0.1 mm. Now, if you look into the screen, you will find that if it is on the higher specification limit or the upper specification limit, it means it is on the risky side because the maximum runout allowed is 0.1 mm. Whereas, when we talk about the lower side, there is no risk because if it is lower, it is better. Similarly, let us take another example with respect to the unilateral tolerance and here we talk about the wall thickness and here the wall thickness is that it should be minimum 5 mm. So, in this case, if you look into the screen, you will see that if it is on the lower side, then it is a risky side, but as long as it is more than 5, it means we are on the no risky side and there is no issue and no problem with respect to that. Now, moving further, whether we need to calculate CP for unilateral tolerance or not, let us see that. Now, if you look into the screen, the formula with respect to the CP, the formula says upper specification limit minus lower specification limit divided by 6 sigma. Now, see when we are talking about lower tolerance, that is about wall thickness, whether we can calculate CP or the process capability, capability index, the answer is no. Similarly, when we talk about the higher tolerance, we were talking about shaft runout cannot be more than 0.1. Here again, can we use upper specification limit and the lower specification limit because we have got only one specification. So, it means that in case of unilateral tolerance, we cannot use CP, that capability index is not possible. Now, come the second question, can we calculate CPK? Answer is yes. Now, in CPK, there are two things, lower and the higher side. Now, when we see the formula with respect to the higher side, it, the formula is CPU is upper specification limit minus mean divided by 3 sigma. So, depending upon that, in case we have a tolerance with respect to the upper specification limit, we can calculate CPU, but in that case, CPL cannot be calculated. Whereas, when we see the formula of CPL, it says mean minus lower specification limit divided by 3 sigma. So, it means in case we have got the lower specification limit, we can calculate that. So, it means either CPL or CPU can be calculated, both cannot be calculated. Another important point which is important here is that CPK cannot be more than CP. It can be either same or less than CP, that is important. 
Now coming to the bilateral tolerance, wherein we have tolerance on the lower side and the higher side, like 5 plus minus 5. So it means it can be 4.9, 4 4.95, 5, 5.05 or it can be 5.1. So in this case, we can calculate both CP and CPK. And in case of CPK also, we can calculate both CPU and CPL and whichever is the lowest will be considered as a CPK value. So if I do a summary, I talked about bilateral tolerance and the unilateral tolerance. In unilateral tolerance, I talked about the two cases. In case we have got the upper specification limit or I have got the lower specification limit. In both the cases, CP cannot be calculated. But in case of CPK, either CPU which is upper or CPL which is lower can be calculated depending upon we have got the lower specification limit or the higher specification limit. But in the case of bilateral tolerance, we can calculate both CP and CPK. But CP can never be more than CP. It can be equal or less than CP. In the next video, again, I am going to take another interesting topic with respect to SPC. Regularly, I am getting a lot of feedback from you, sir, and they are helping you to understand your expectations. So, please do continue that. In case you are liking these kind of videos, please share with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to my YouTube channel, bhavimangla.com. And in case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video, you will find a link below. If you click that, you will find a blog there. There you find this information in much more detail. Thank you.